across Cheshire today, in our ancient churches and churchyards, we find carved stone effigies and tomb chests from a bygone age. Carved from solid stone, marble and alabaster, these monuments represent knights, noblemen and the landed gentry. Many of these stunning carvings date from the early medieval period right through to the late 19th century. Through my work filming episodes for both my History Walks and Rambles Through History series, I've been privileged to visit many of these stunning monuments in person and on many occasions been given special permission to see these that are normally housed within chapels and sometimes behind locked doors. So join me now as I take you on a personal journey of discovery as I visit just a handful of these beautifully carved effigies and tomb chests from our ancient past. In the centre of the chancel stands a beautifully carved alabaster effigy, that of Sir Hugh Calverley, who died on the 23rd of April 1394. Our second effigy to be found here in the chancel is that of Sir George Beeston, who died on the 13th of September 1601. During his life, he served under four monarchs from Henry VIII right through to Elizabeth I. Sir George certainly made his mark on the history of 16th century England. There's no doubt that Sir George Beeston lived a full and active life as a soldier and a sailor in defence of the English crown. Carved as knights in the 14th century, their heads rest upon the Davenport crest, strongly suggesting that these are indeed the Davenports. Now the making of History Walks gives me a privilege to be able to see such wonderful ancient treasures such as this other stone effigy, again dated to the 14th century. History is everywhere to be found and it's worth making that effort to go out and look for it. Here where we find our first monument, dated to 1410 and representing John and Margaret Mannering. Now Randall's wife Marjorie lays here beautifully attired in long flowing robes. She was a credit to Randall and his family. Now the third monument that we find here today at St. Lawrence's Church is that of Philip and Ellen Mannering. Philip died in the year 1647.
Well, what a great honour and a privilege to finally be stood here at the tomb of the 13th Baron of Warrington. For here is the final resting place of Sir John Le Bottler and his wife, Lady Margaret Gerard, from Kingsley. However, all is not quite what it seems, and this tomb that we see today originally stood elsewhere within the church. For it was in the year of 1947 when these two beautifully carved alabaster tomb effigies were separated using nothing more than a workman's saw. Now it's here in the Crew Chapel where we find the tomb and an effigy carved in alabaster of Sir Robert Fowlhurst and dated to approximately 1390 AD. I find such tombs spellbinding it's almost as though history has been frozen in time. The detail is exquisite and to a reminder of our ancient past. Of all the tombs and the effigies that I see whilst out filming for Rambles Through History, there's one in particular that I've been waiting to visit for quite some time. For this is the recumbent figure of Robert Fowlshurst, priest of this church between the years of 1475 to 1529. What I love is the simpleness of the carving and the hands held in prayer. Robert was the rector here at Bartholomew until his death in 1529, and he was also the last rector before the Reformation. The most important monument here at St Mary's is the canopied 13th century tomb of a member of the Venables family. The only one of its kind in Cheshire, the canopy was constructed in the 17th century to protect the tombstone that had once actually been within the church in the late 13th century. There are two other notable memorials here at St Mary's, one to the north and one to the south of the Venables tomb. Both of these are carved from yellow sandstone in the medieval period and much the same material as used for the Venables tomb. Now here, just to the north of the Venables tomb, lays the tombstone of what appears to be a cleric with his hands clasped in prayer, again from the medieval period. south of the Venables carvings we find a carving of a knight, a medieval knight. This one's lost his leg but I'm sure it wasn't in battle. We 
We're here today in Plemstow, just a couple of miles away from Mickle Trafford near Chester. The site of St Peter's Church here in Plemstow was once the most likely a hermitage where it was occupied by St Plegmund himself in the late 9th century. It's here at the east end of the church where we come across this stunning vault of the Hurlston family consisting of an ashlar sandstone anchorless plinth mounted with a carved baroque tomb chest it's one of the strangest layouts i've ever seen in any cheshire churchyard to date dated to 1670 it certainly has many unusual features the one here on the south face is that of a male whilst on the north side the carving represents a female Whilst the original construction date of this vault can be dated accurately to 1670 AD, the vault also contains other family members. I am sure that in the coming months and years I will visit many more of Cheshire's effigies and tomb chests that reside in our ancient churches and churchyards and you will be most welcome to join me.